Hello, and welcome to Breakthroughs from Europe, Lopsec's weekly take on the most recent political and socio-economic developments of the week. My name is Lucia Rybnikárová, and I'm project coordinator at Globsec Policy Institute. Today we have with us Martin Terlikowski, Head of International Security Program at the Polish Institute of International Affairs. Portugal has just recently taken over the presidency of the European Council. One of the key priorities they have identified is to strengthen Europe's strategic autonomy, keeping it open to the world. On Friday, Portugal's defense minister said that the concept of strategic autonomy should be understood as the ability for the EU to do more preferably with partners, but alone if necessary. Martin, you recently published a paper on European strategic autonomy in third countries, the defense industrial dim dimension. Could you briefly say what is it about? You claim that, there are co they, that the cooperation with non-EU NATO members doesn't comprise EU goal of achieving strategic autonomy. Why is that? Uh, thank you, Lucia, for asking this question. Indeed, uh, I believe that uh, in the entire debate about European strategic autonomy, it is very often uh, forgotten or omitted that the entire uh, body of the European Union's documents which govern the recent defense initiatives, such as the permanent structured cooperation mechanism or the European Defense Fund or the coordinated annual review on defense, uh, all introduced uh, over the last few years to, to, to boost European military uh, capabilities. All these documents stress that NATO remains uh, the pillar of um, uh, collective defense uh, in Europe uh, and that uh, European Union should develop um, the, its military uh, capabilities. Uh, the member states should do it uh, via uh, instruments of the European Union, but in coordination with NATO. Uh, and, and this is happening in practice. The European Union and NATO uh, have uh, started to cooperate and uh, since 2016 there have been over 70 so-called joint actions uh, undertaken by uh, uh, the staffs of both European Union and NATO. So the coordination is going on and this is the reality the, that the European Union in its pursuit of strategic autonomy, which remains vaguely defined, uh, is actually coordinating and synchronizing with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Thank you very much for your answer. My next question would be, do you think that the EU's cooperation with third countries in the defense industrial domain is beneficial? Well, to understand uh, what is the relation between, what may be the relation between major producers of armaments in the European Union and third countries, which are also like the United States or United Kingdom, on Norway, which also have uh, significant uh, defense uh, industries and defense ambitions, we have to remember that these are all exporter countries. They do export the armaments, so they are, by definition, competitors. This means that European Union uh, can cooperate with third countries in the defense industrial domain in certain areas, technology areas or niches, where this cooperation could be mutually beneficial. Uh, and when we speak about these uh, technology areas, these are mostly uh, technologies where it is more um, economically sound to join forces to develop a very difficult and a very costly technology than to go on your own and risk uh, failure and um, risk inflation of costs in the projects. In other words, I would say that the cooperation of uh, European Union with third countries in defense industrial domain can be beneficial in certain technology areas which have to be carefully chosen and have a kind of a political framework uh, to, 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 to be developed. And maybe coming back to NATO, do you agree that absolute autonomy from NATO and the US is not possible either in the defense industrial or operational domains in the near far future? Well, the, in absolute terms, autonomy, European strategic autonomy is not possible and it is not sought by na any of the uh, EU member states. Uh, it is simply impossible because of how modern defense industry works, where you have basically links with, between different companies from different continents and you simply need to, uh, because of the cost issue, uh, you need to seek um, uh, in your supply chains, 
cost-effective solutions. You need to enter cooperation. So absolute autonomy is not possible in the defense industrial domain and also in the operational domain, because it's hard to imagine that European Union member states would start a serious, a big military operation in which its core strategic interest would be endangered uh, without uh, support of the US or NATO. It is simply still the transatlantic alliance um, which defines uh, the perimeters of defending Europe. Uh, so either in the, in the defense industrial domain or in the uh, uh, operational, military operational domain, we could only speak about the levels or, or grades or shades of, of strategic autonomy and pushing too much towards absolute far end of the, of the spectrum uh, towards ambitious interpretations of strategic autonomy could bring harm to transatlantic relations as it would bring in tensions uh, between the US, uh, UK uh, or Norway and, uh, and uh, European Union. Thank you very much. And uh, in the paper, you introduced the concept of the EU strategic responsibility towards third countries. Can you elaborate? Well, the concept uh, itself is not, is not mine. It has been mentioned in a number of discussions for over a year or so. Uh, but uh, I like it uh, particularly because it indicates uh, where the issue um, is uh, in reality. Uh, and the issue is basically that Europe needs to change the burden sharing uh, in the transatlantic relation. It needs to do more to deliver more military capabilities. And this is what is both expected by uh, everybody on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and this is something what is not questioned. So why not uh, pursue this goal of beefing up military capabilities of making Europeans able to deploy more forces to engage in more uh, operations without wrapping this uh, quest uh, up in a rhetoric which could be divisive and harm um, in harm transatlantic relations. Simply, if we speak about responsible approach of the European Union to transatlantic relations, to, uh, to uh, defense and security in Europe, then let's abandon the rhetoric about being as autonomous as possible and let's focus on responsibly developing uh, military capabilities which are needed uh, for securing and defending Europe. Martin, thank you very much for your time. This was very interesting to hear. And the policy paper we have just talked about is a part of the project Enhanced European Opportunity Partners in the EU's Defense and Security Initiative Study Case of Norway, funded by the Royal Norwegian Ministry of Defense. If you would like to find out more on the topic, please follow our project page and read the policy paper.